G'day folks, Daz here from Into the Mountains. Uh, we're talking Garmin Rhino 750 and the older model 650. So a little while ago I put it out to the viewers about uh, what you want to know about these units and how I use them. So I'm going to go through uh, step by step on a few features and a few scenarios, real world scenarios where I find them really handy. And then at the end, I'm gonna go through point to point about all the questions that you guys left uh, on that other Q&A because there were some really good ones in there to cover and uh, hopefully you can all get something out of it. So a little bit of a background, um, I use these predominantly for hunting, so here in the Victorian high country, but a lot of this stuff will cross over to uh, anyone just needing to navigate out in the bush. There's lots in these units, so we're gonna do a bit of a deeper dive. Let's get into it. So just, to, just before we get started, um, I will be talking about the features on both of these units, but um, there's not really any differences in terms of their capabilities. What you'll find is that some of the things I'll be talking about, uh, they're just located in different areas or called different things on the older 650 unit. So rest assured, I'm not gonna leave you out. Um, I will be using this as the unit that we're talking about, but you will be able to find any of the features I talk about in the older 650, so let's go. Okay, just to get started, we're just gonna quickly talk about the genuine topo maps that you can buy for your unit. So the Garmin Rhinos don't come with preloaded maps. Now they're a full blown GPS, you can use them to backtrack and whatnot, but when you get it you on your screen, you're just gonna have a green screen if, unless you have some kind of map card loaded. So in the back here, when you take your battery out, there's a little metal door that opens up and you can insert different maps depending on where you are in the world and what you want to see. So in this unit, I've got the Topo Light, and in the Garmin, the new one in the 750, I've got the full version. Now the main difference between the full version and the light version is that um, the datum line information on the light version is approximately some kind of information every 40 meters. And on the full version like this one, it's gonna give you something every five meters. So that could be the difference between seeing, say a cliff face before you walk down a bluff or not seeing it. So if you do a lot of planning um, in areas that you haven't walked on or you don't know the lay of the land, um, I recommend the full version. Otherwise for every other uh, intents and purposes, the, the light will be fine. So that's how you insert it. When you get your card, you pull that little micro SD out and you chuck it in that back little trap door there and away you go. So a quick little hunting story to show the value of a Garmin Rhino system when we're all out in the field together. So one day we're all out hunting, there was quite a few of us, and um, when we all got back to camp, we're all packing up and one of the hunters hadn't returned. And I thought that's a bit odd. So um, we all spread out and started looking and searching and I found a um, person's car and jumped on the radio, no response. Um, kind of thought, well, I'll get up on a bit of high ground and go up, went up and up and up, heard a tried the radio, heard a little bit of a crackle, thought right, I jumped onto the maps, found the contacts, and um, I polled his position, and it sent out a, um, a, a signal, and it bounced back, and I got the immediate response and the exact location of where my buddy was. And I was able to go in there, and it turns out that he'd injured his leg, he was stuck in a very bottom of a valley, and the gunman just, you know, it, it just saved a whole heap of heartache and possibly a rescue. I was able to go get the rest of the cavalry, go in and retrieve him. So even if that person is incapacitated, maybe not being able to talk or knocked on conscience, for instance, um, as long as their radio is on and they're still on channel, you will be able to uh, get their position even if they're not responding. So it's a very, very uh, handy tool to have with you in a group situation. And so when you open up your um, interface here on your Rhino, you've got uh, a pretty basic uh, intro screen. This bit up here is um, your satellite data. So you can see here I'm uh, not getting any satellites because I'm inside, so I've got to be X through the center here. And um, you've got a little uh, shortcut of, of what channel I'm on. So I'm on channel 28, I'm at five watts. So you can change the power that your Rhino will output. So 1.5, 2 and 5. And you've got here this CTCSS. Now this is your private channeling. So an open channel, channel 28 for instance, you can also then choose uh, a, a, an encoded channel. So if you just want a private conversation, you can have you know, 2835, everyone puts their, their radios to 2835 and you're gonna have a channel that only the people on that frequency are gonna be able to discuss. However, when you speak and it goes out, 
you will broadcast on the open channel, so keep that in mind. I recommend, I just work on open channels, I just have that set to off, which is there. And uh, this is where you set up your name, so you can call your radio whatever you want, and this is what everyone else will see. Um, you can put your little emoji and pick whatever character you want to be on there. And, um, and away you go. So one thing that's a little bit of a pet hate with uh, the Rhino users is the sometimes the sounds that they make. So they can be a little bit noisy, especially if you've got your volume up a little bit. If someone's talking on the radio, when they let go of their push to talk button, it often makes that chirp. Now that's called a Roger tone. So back in the old days, you know, you'd finish transmission and you would say over or you would say Roger. So they call it a Roger tone. Now to get rid of that, it is very annoying if you've got a few people chatting and it just keeps going off because it's often louder than the person speaking through the speaker. So to turn it off, you've got to turn it off on everyone's unit. So your Roger tone is what happens on the other person's unit when you let go. Now their Roger tone obviously that they've got set on their unit is what you hear when they finish transmitting. So it's important that you all turn your Roger tones off, off if you don't want that feature. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. If you click this little bar down the bottom and you use this a fair bit, these little three lines down here, it gives you some more options in here. So you click that there. And uh, this is what I was talking about with your tones. So we're gonna go into the tones setup. And you can see I've got tones on, which is when I'm touching things and moving around. And then down here you have radio tones. Under radio tones, this is where we get the Roger tone, the ring tone, and the call tone that you wanna select. So. If you want all of these things off where you're broadcasting, you'll need to do this on your radio as well as the other people's radio in your party. On the side of the radio, you also have the power button. If you touch the power button once, it'll bring you to your backlight settings. If you touch your volume, uh, to go back, just press it here. If you touch your volume button, you'll see there you've got your volume setting and your squelch setting, so that's a little shortcut. Now when you are in here, you can see there it's important that this is not marked as a red X through it. Otherwise, you won't be hearing anybody. So if you want to hear people on the channel, it's important that you make sure that that is not got a red X through it. And also this, you want to have both of these looking like they don't have an X over them. Like so. For this video, because I don't want people talking over me, I'm just going to put that onto mute just by hitting there. Now something that is unique to the 650 users, it's a bit of a trap for new players. When you turn your radio on, by default, the sound is on mute. So if you're all about to head out for a hunt, everyone fires up the radios and you don't do a radio check, it's a bit of a trap because everyone will be talking. They'll be able to hear you, but you won't be able to hear anyone coming back to you. So just make sure that when you fire up your unit, you check that volume is up a little bit off the floor because you just uh, will be out of the game for the hunt. Now let's just head back to the radio page here. So um, radio setup, so we did the tones, the radio setup in here. Um, this is where uh, they use a few term, terms in here. So if you don't want your location to be sent, you can toggle that on and off. So if you just want to use it as a, a UHF radio with, uh, without sending your location, that's where you can get to the feature uh, just by touching it on and off. Polling is the term that Garmin uses to send your location um, and people to be able to see where you are also. So if you want to poll them or they poll you, you can um, allow that by turning it on on here. Power is your radio power, so you can choose between those three settings, half, two, and five watts. Uh, that's all you'll need to worry about inside there. And if we move along the bottom here in your radio, You've also got your messaging, so you can do a message in there, which I don't use too much because someone needs to actually look at their screen to see that you've messaged them. So I don't really like the messaging service uh, that is in, built into this, so I don't use that too much. But I do use this one a lot. This is the contacts page. So if you click onto that, it's all the people in your contacts. And um, what you can actually do, it's pretty powerful. So if I want to get onto, say, Rod, I can click on him. Now I can view him on the map. I can click here and poll his location without contacting him. So if I don't want to disturb him, but I want to update him on my map and see where he is at the moment, I can actually click that. My radio will go and search for his position and then pull it back and update it on my screen. I can clear my track. 
obviously delete that waypoint, uh, delete that uh, contact if I don't want any on more. And then I can project a waypoint over to him as well. So that's a really powerful thing that you will use a fair bit. So get used to um, you know, syncing up your buddy's radios and then um, and using that on uh, those little features, particularly the pole location is very handy. Okay, let's talk about magnetic interference. So I get this question a fair bit. So all the old Boy Scouts will know, if you've got an old compass like this one, and you can see there that compass, I hope you can see there that compass thing. If I bring a magnet into the fold, that compass goes berserk, all right? So just like real world compasses, even things like your phone will make this spin. If you are using the compass to navigate, uh, like so, so if I put my backlight on there, see the compass there? If you're using that to navigate and you come in contact with interference, whether it be magnets like in the top of this, it's gonna go bananas and it's gonna give you a false reading. Even your phone, anything metallic, will all create interference with compasses. Now, the magnets in here, I've actually spoken to the Garmin techs, um, magnets in general, interference, things like in your car, your transmission, they're not gonna do any permanent damage. Garmin have assured me that will not do any permanent damage to your unit, so like me, my Rhino lives in here right next to these magnets and it's not an issue. All you need to do is just pull it a little bit further away from the interference and it will come back and be true. If you find that it's not true, it's a matter of just recalibrating, which you should do before you start a trip anyway. So that's the deal with magnetic interference. Okay, so now I'm on the map screen. Um, this is just a random spot on the map, but if I was at this location, my little triangle would be in the center showing my location. And if my buddies were in the environment around me, you would see them coming up on that, on that topography there. So I can see the lay of the land where I am in relation to those guys. When you're in this mode, um, the little 300 meters there, so you can, that's imagine you're in an aircraft looking down at the ground, I'm 300 meters above the ground here. If I wanna zoom in a bit, obviously I'm gonna come down and most of the time I'm operating on, you know, how, the distance that I've got between me and my buddies so I can see them in real time on the screen. So usually that kind of 150 to 300 is quite good. Obviously the further out you go, the more information and the more land that you're gonna get around you. So if you wanna mark just where you are right now in, in the time being, you just hit mark waypoint. It's gonna put a mark on that location. There you can set the name of the waypoint and you can put an icon on it and that'll add it to your waypoints list. The other icon on the this front page here is the where to. So you're gonna use that for a numerous, numerous things. You can ask your Rhino to navigate to a waypoint. You can ask it to navigate to a person, um, a recently found place. So let's say you mark say a wallow and you wanna go there. That's where you'll hit this to get into it. So you hit where to, I wanna go to one of my waypoints. I'm gonna hit waypoint and it's basically gonna have the list of waypoints that I've made, and I'm gonna click on that. It will tell me how far it is from my location and the direction, and then you can say, yes, go to that location. So the other good thing with where to is if you get, click on where to, scroll all the way to the bottom, under contacts, then select the person that you want to go to in your group, click him and then off you go. You'll be off on the one way. It's gonna come up with it on the map and a direction and how far in distance you've got until you hit your buddy. So that's a really powerful tool. You just click that person and sit go and then you'll be on your way to that person. Okay, so another hunting scenario. Uh, if we've got a situation that we are uh, say looking across a gully, so we're, we're sitting on one face and we're looking over to the other face. Now, traditionally, when we do a cross gully shot, um, we take a shot on an animal, we'll mark the position where we are, you might mark it with a bit of toilet paper or something in the tree, and then when you go and cross the gully, um, you mark some objects over there and you try and work out where that shot was taken so you can get a start to recover your animal, because obviously, you know, they don't always just drop on the spot, sometimes they go for a bit of a run. Now, when you get over to the other face, it's very disorientating. Sometimes you just cannot work and you all start arguing, oh, we should be up higher, and it all looks different when you're over there. A really, really powerful tool to 
to put your ease at mind is the sight and go feature. So that is something I use all of the time, whether it's in that scenario where I'm marking my position from where I shot from, and I'm projecting a waypoint where that deer was or that target was, and I can get almost an exact measure so I know I've got something to aim for when I get over there. But it's also handy for looking for, um, say you wanna to get to another position, it might be a grassy face that's you know, a couple of kilometers off that you wanna go and have a look at, or a, a, a landscape feature, it might be a rocky outcrop or something like that. You can use that sight and go feature to accurately paint a picture of, of um, points of interest out in the real world. So it's very important that you learn to use this um, you don't need a rangefinder. It is much more accurate when you use a rangefinder, but you can use a little bit of common sense and the topography to kind of work out where that is and um, and do a pretty good estimate on the distance and lock it in. So we'll go through that feature as well. Okay, so let's look at a feature called sight and go. There's a few ways you can get to sight and go. You can use the shortcut here, or you can do it via the compass. When you hit these three little lines, you'll get the sight and go feature there. So we'll use the, the standard shortcut for sight and go. Now sight and go is a great feature. Um, as you rotate your radio around, think as the, um, the antenna here as the pointer, and you're gonna point the radio at the point of interest that you wanna look at. So let's say I'm in this position and I've shot in that direction. Now I wanna mark the spot that where I've just shot to. So I'm gonna project a waypoint and um, that way it will uh, give me a spot to navigate to afterwards. So what you're gonna do once you point in the correct direction, you're gonna lock the direction of that. Once the compass is now locked, I wanna project a waypoint to that position. So I'm gonna project a waypoint. And you can get some different metrics here. So obviously we're in the metric system and I know meters pretty well, so I'm gonna stay with meters. You do need to put the decimal place in the correct spot. So let's say it's 150 meters across the gully. So I'm gonna leave the zero as the zero, type a one or five, and I've got 150 meters there. Hit okay. So it's now projected a, uh, a point, an imaginary point across the gully at that distance for me. I would hit save and edit, and then there you can mark and put your your uh, name, you can call it, you know, uh, shot placement or something like that, or deer or whatever it may be over there, rock that you want to navigate to, and uh, put your icon in and hit save. So now that you've saved your location, you just say where to, I want to find one of the waypoints that I just made, and there's the one we just made at the top there. So you can hit that, and it's going to be 150 meters to the northwest of my position, and then off I go. So a little bit further down in the menu and you'll see Track Manager. So Track Manager is a really powerful tool. Um, it basically is where you'll manage all of the different routes you've taken as well as all the tracks that your friends have um, taken. And what you'll find is that as you're hunting with your buddies, everyone's gonna make different lines across your screen. So. Uh, next time you go out, you're going to want to clear these and, and start a, a new track. So this is where you do that. You can clear your tracks, start a new track, stop a track, um, and you can also back them up from here. So it is a pretty powerful thing that you do want to try and stay on, the, the, um, stay on top of them. It's also a feature if you lose something and you want to go back the way you came from, you can hit track back and it will just run you in reverse of the track that you've made. You can pause them, edit them, save them in different names, and then back them up later on. Scrolling down a bit further is another really powerful tool that we use a lot out there, and it's Share Wirelessly. So if you've found a point of interest, let's say it's a, a wallow or a preach, or perhaps you've shot a deer and you've got it on the ground. Um, now, you save your waypoint, and you can share it with everyone in the group that's on your channel. So the way you do that is you hit share wirelessly and we want to send something. So we're going to send via UHF and it's asking us, what do we want to send? Let's send a waypoint. Okay, I want to send the waypoint of the um, point of impact that I've just shot across the gully to. I'm going to save that one. We'll send that to everyone that is in our group. 
It's also a good thing to use just back at camp if you've caught up for the end of the day and you want to share a few things that you've found during the day with your buddies. You can share them and then all the waypoints will be added into their list of waypoints. You can also share things from your map. So if you're in the field and, um, and you don't remember the names of them, you can just go use map, scroll to the point of interest on your map and then share that point of interest from your map. Okay, so let's have a little quick look at the buttons on the outside of the radio. Um, starting over here, you've got your push to talk button, which is how we transmit. So with this, I find a lot of people make the mistake. Um, with UHFs, you really need to press the button, wait for half a second, and then speak. If you press and you speak at the same time, the people on the receiving end are only going to miss out on the first few words that you say. So it's important to first press the button, just wait a moment and then speak, and that way you'll come through nice and clear on the other end. The little button just above that is your polling button. So that's actually gonna share your position with the people that are synced up to you and in your group. Um, it will also do it when you talk, so when you let go, you'll get updated automatically, but if you don't wanna to talk to anyone and you just wanna send your location really quickly to the group, just touch that and it will go out and send off to everyone in the, in the, the hunting group that you're in. Okay, so I'm just going to read out a few of the questions that came through uh, from the um, comment section on the last little YouTube questionnaire we did. So um, there's a few things in here that are, are really valuable and that might help some other people out. So I'll go through them. And again, if you've got more questions, I'll try and answer them in the comment section of this video. So put them in there and I'll try and monitor this periodically and help you out wherever I can. So Nobby Clark says, uh, great work, Daz. Uh, great show, everyone how to use these things, how do we turn all the audio alerts off. So, yep, that's uh, that's a little bit like what we covered in there. There's a few ways to get to it, but just under your radio settings, and uh, this is where people get frustrated a lot. Just go, make sure you're going into that tone set up there, and then you want to go one further into your radio tones and make sure they're off, but not just on your radio, on everyone's radio. Make sure that's, that is an important thing. Okay. Uh, Bertros, hey Daz, any tips on saving the battery life when out backpacking? So what we do, um, I don't use the battery cradles because the alkaline battery cradles in the field, they actually reduce you to the 2 watt radio um, broadcast, so I'm on 5 here, so I like to stay up on the 5. You can bring that down to 2.5 watt when you're in close proximity, buddy, that will save a lot if you're a bit of a chatterbox and you spend a bit of time on there, but uh, we keep the chatter to the minimum. Um, what we do is we usually have a check-in time. So we usually um, set off and say, right, we're going to check in at 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 3 o'clock. And um, we turn our radios off or periodically between those times just to keep everything to a minimum. Um, these genuine Garmin batteries are very good. Even in the cold, I feel, uh, I find I get about 12 hours out of them. So they, they are a great battery. Um, they're really a low absorption battery. Um, so yeah, you can spare them. I can get, you know, a 10 day trip with three batteries if I use them sparingly. So the other side of that is the charging. So we get asked a bit, um, we've got a guy here. Yeah. Mark, uh, Gaynor, he's asking to overcome the slow charging from the USB. Um, you know, how do, how do I achieve that? So, uh, he has a solution, uh, try a, a USB A to female cigarette lighter. Uh, and then an old uh, Nuvi card charger, which is a Garmin charger. Um, there is a few ways around it. I've seen a few guys do a few things. F to be honest, I find just grab yourself a couple of spare genuine Garmin batteries. Um, I've had it hit and miss, and by the time in the field you bring a battery bank, um, the battery bank weight kind of negates because <laughs> uh, you, you, you suck it all out of there just to put it into here, if you know what I mean. So you're almost better off having one of these rather than bringing a big heavy battery bank, save the battery bank for your other, for your other um, electronics on the field and just use those. And um, that's what we've been doing. It seems to get us passed really well. Uh, KC, hey Dave, love your channel. I'd love to know if you can get them more to explore deer maps to overlay on the 750. Keep up the great vids. Uh, mate, we have been able to get the, um, the maps onto these cards, um, but to be honest, it wasn't much shot. What we found was they didn't scale. So at a certain uh, zoom range, so like at 500 meters, you'd have them on there, um, but they didn't scale, they didn't rotate, and it was, to be honest, very confusing and cluttered. So 
Uh, short answer is yes, you can, but um, it's a little bit cumbersome. I recommend just you know putting them on your phone or screenshotting them on your phone before you head away, and um, and just do it the old-fashioned way and compare to. Yeah, you know, in an ideal world, yes, it would be great to have these on the same device, but I just think we're not quite there yet. Uh, who we got next? Um, uh, Ben's bees. Um, how well will the 650 and the 750 go communicating with each other? The good news is that Garmin have uh, been kind enough to um, make these down talk, so they they interact perfectly well with each other. So if someone's getting into the new system or going to buy an old second hand system, no problems at all. They'll they're totally integratable. They will have no problems talking with each other. So that that is a good sign. Um, David Ford, uh, Daz, I've had uh, trouble with the compass on it, walking around in circles and thick stuff. Uh, <laughs> we trusted what we saw on the screen instead of a gut feel, not sure what's happened, um, and I'm very confused. Uh, so what you could find with that is, um, I've found this a few times as well, so you can get interference obviously from magnets and, and other things like your phone, etc. that will do it. But sometimes um, there's other things in, in the environment that can affect these, like heavy iron ore in the ground can do it, an uncalibrated device can do it. Um, so just make sure that you're holding it away from anything that could cause interference, like anything metallic or another phone, etc., Make sure that you have calibrated that compass before you set off so that you've got your heading. And yeah, do trust your gut feeling because um, these things, they're not always perfect. If, if, you, if you kind of think in your head, oh, it should be this way and, um, and it's not agreeing, you know, personally, I bring always, I just bring a manual compass and I can just triple check that. If I've ever got any doubts, I can just triple, triple check that and uh, I'm not going to have a misadventure. So yeah, that's, that's where I'd, uh, you know, be inclined just to, to not always trust the technology and, and not only uh, put all your eggs in one basket by having just the one device, you know, have a, have a redundancy built in there, mate. Um, to Adam Stoneman, two questions, Daz. How do you maximize battery life without sacrificing features? So similar to what we spoke about before. And the combat, the magnetic interference. So I think we've covered that, Adam. Um, if you've got any more, if I didn't cover that enough for you, just uh, sing out in the comments below and I'll, I'll elaborate for you there. Uh, Angus Ford, do you know if there are any software updates that need to be done to the 750? And if so, how often? Yes, mate, there is some updates on these. And out of the box, you absolutely need to update your radio. So... Um, can you imagine that the warehouse at Garmin's got a big pallet load of these? Um, they're all bo boxed up nicely in their brand new packaging. Um, the techs have come up with a new software patch. They're not going to go through and open all those boxes and update all them and then get all the supplies that have got them on the shelves. It's really up to you. I highly recommend when you first get your unit, plug it in, do the update. There's some significant updates in there that improve battery life. Um, there's quite a few known issues with these from when they started that they have fixed So make sure you do it and then after that I'd do it every kind of four to six months Just check in plug it into um, base camp and just check that there is one available and um, Yeah, you'll find that they it does make a big difference uh, Fabian Joseph um, I'd be interested in charging technique from a battery bank seems to take forever so yes, um, it does take forever if you're using, we were really excited about the new units. In the old units, they weren't USB rechargeable. When they brought out the 750, they said, oh, we've got USB charging port in this. Um, it's gonna be great. Well, the little jump of a joy saying, oh, how good when we're on a backpacking thing, we can use our battery banks. And it's not the case. Um, it's a complicated battery system. It's a smart or an intelligent battery. Uh, and to be honest, all of the methods I've tried, they're a bit of a hodgepodge kind of scenario. I just find you are better off just going down the line of investing in the genuine Garmin battery. Um, it's just the weight of the battery bank that you need and the amount of absorption that it will suck out of that battery. It's just better off using one of these. Uh, well, that's what I do anyway. Okay, moving down to uh, Mark Staff. Hey Daz, I'm the king of multi-purpose. Mates constantly give me shit about it and I want to know if the Rhino 750 can be set up for silent UHF comms, i.e. Bluetooth headphones uh, with a push-to-talk function. 
um, would keep it silent. It would just be great for the motorbike comms, etc. Uh, yeah, we have played with that a fair bit, and yes, they do work. You can get a great little headset that clips onto your ear. You will have to have a tether down to it. Um, I haven't played with a Bluetooth so or wireless system, but I have used the plug-in systems. What we found is they're pretty sensitive. Um, you don't have full control over um, when, when you talk or you cough or you sneeze or you get into some thick bushes. Uh, it'll activate the mic and you'll come over on top of everyone. Um, so you would be better off with a, with a PTT, so uh, some kind of button either on your neck or um, on your shoulder where you can mount it and just press the button when you want to. There is some aftermarket ones that will plug straight into the jack, headphone jack in the back and they do work. Uh, we tried to hook some up with our motorbikes. Um, ideally, you're going to want a button down on your handlebars so you're not having to lift your, your hand off your bars up to your neck. Uh, but yes, it can be done. There is some around there. So yeah, do a bit of research. You will find that there's, there is a few that will work with it. Personally, when I'm hunting, I find that cord annoying. Uh, so I didn't stay with that line and I kind of need to hear things stand up around me so I don't like wearing kind of those plugs or things attached to me like that. Okay, so Devlin Adventures. Hey mate, wonder if you can help me out. I have the 750. I'm wondering is there a way to set a line on the map showing a direct route or is it only the arrow in the compass you have to follow? So no, yeah, you can set up a line. Um, rather than hitting the... Um, uh, the compass just to navigate in the bearing that you're going on. If you project a waypoint or you hit um, navigate to the waypoint and set go, you will get a line and it'll get a countdown timer showing you um, directly to it. It won't follow the contour, it will be a, 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 as, a as a crow flies kind of line. So yep, that's totally doable. Glenn McTosh, uh, running a 650 polling seems to only work sometimes, more often doesn't work even when sitting next to each other. Any ideas? Yeah, the main thing with that is is that you're sitting next to each other. Um, get a little bit of distance, go at least 30, 40 meters. Make sure you've got that clear open sky and you've got good bars at the top for your satellite service um, and then sync up with each other. You might have to turn them on and off. Um, sometimes when you very first start out, they can take a little while for you, the, the system to mesh together from radio to radio, but generally if you're hitting that polling button on the side, um, Obviously, each other has to accept each other into the group. So you, when you very first, when the two radios come into contact, it'll say, hey, I found Josh. Do you want to accept him? You say yes. And uh, yeah, persist, they will come through. We often have that when we're all at camp really close together and we're getting interference. Just move a little bit further away and they should come through. Uh, Ewan Watson, have you been able to load the Vic more to explore hunting and hunting maps uh currently using the phone so yeah we covered that on the other one uh even hopefully that answered your uh, question there uh luke elliott hey does do you use the stupid base camp on pc or laptop do you have issues with it i don't use mine enough i'd love to know how to set it up properly hey, it's a pretty powerful program i do use it a lot i back up on it i share all my locations i put my montana i do all of my updates it's very good. It's very powerful. Um, I recommend persisting with it. Uh, to be honest, that's a whole nother, a whole nother thing. It's probably a whole nother video there. So if I get enough people wanting to see that, um, I can do another video on that. But yes, I do use it. It is quite a powerful thing. And on PC, absolutely yes. Cell uh, G, is it worth having the GPS and comms all built into one device? Uh, any advice in case one or both features fail? Um, I used to have. There's two separate devices and I found that I was always hamstrung because I had two batteries, two failure points, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I usually have my phone as a redundancy or my inReach device as a redundancy. But um, yeah, I think it is an advantage to have both, um, both of these devices tied into one unit and just have the one thing to worry about. Um, you'll just find that you use them a lot more. But um, as always, I do recommend having some kind of contingency plan or redundancy there, whether it be a phone or something similar. Uh, Hawks667, uh, channel 40, always busy, seems to be an issue. I'm on my second 750 after the first one failed and was replaced by Garmin. Now, I believe this is a bit of a sore point for Garmin. The 650 units have no issue with Channel 40. Obviously, Channel 40 here in Australia is a repeater station, and um, we use it as a call channel a lot. And um, 
it's some kind of hardware issue. Um, I can't get Garmin to absolutely admit that something is wrong, but absolutely, we've had over 20 units in a camp. Not a single unit can operate or scan past 40. It seems to be just open all the time. It is a glitch with these units. Um, if channel 40 is something that you want to use, then uh, it's going to be a deal breaker for you because it just constantly receives a transmission signal. Um, I've also replaced my other unit thinking it was a unit and hit a dead end there. Um, the big thing for me that it ruins is when you hit a rolling scan because 40 is always open, as it rolls up to 40, it'll get stuck and you can't just do a rolling scan continuously like you could on this unit. So yeah, that's a bit of a sore point. It doesn't look like it's uh, something can be fixed in the software fix, so I, I don't think we're going to see that get fixed, mate. Um, Redo84, maps free and paid, um, auto transmission of your location, has it got one feature that updates every two, five, ten minutes? Um, I'm not sure about the, uh, the auto transmission. I think you mean like a breadcrumb trail. Um, it, it will constantly update back to the satellite um, uh, we, you know, within three meters of accuracy. I think that's what you're referring to there, Reto. Um, maps free and paid. The definitely go the genuine topos. We, we have compared the kind of the pirated ones before. They aren't as good. They don't have as much detail on them. Um, I did use them for a while thinking it was the same until we actually got out in the bush and compared. Uh, the genuine topo stuff, um, it is a real deal. It does kind of do a lot more than the others. So I recommend just biting the bullet. Um, for all intents and purposes, if you do have a budget, just go, go the light. The light's great. It'll do everything that you want it to do, to be honest. Uh, Ned BD72, can you pull a root off it? Uh, yes, you can, mate. Just go into your tracks manager and uh, you should be able to download all the routes that you want. Brendan Dick, uh, hey Daz, my 750 freezes sometimes when I'm talking on the two-way radio and I have to take the battery out until it unfreezes. Any ideas? Uh, yeah, that absolutely uh, is an issue with these units. And in the early days, I also got mine replaced because the same thing. It used to be really bad, but since the update and the patch, it has gotten a lot better. So first of all, I highly recommend doing the update. Um, the other thing you can do is ring tech support with Garmin. They're in Clay Place up in um, New South Wales. They are really good. You get to speak to a genuine person that's going to try and help you out. They can do a few little soft resets and things to try for you. Um, failing that, it sounds like you may have a faulty unit that will be up for uh, warranty, and they will warranty it. So uh, mine he does it sometimes, only a few times now. Um, it is annoying when it happens, and yes, the only way you can do it is to pull your battery off and, and reset it. Um, I just kind of look down at periodically. It might happen kind of once every you know, six or seven days. Um, yeah, it can be a little bit problematic, but um, you know, what can you do? I've already replaced it a few times and yeah, this is the only unit that kind of does this. So um, with electronics, that is the case that sometimes there is just a few issues. Okay, so it looks like I've gotten through those questions that were all done there. So uh, if there is any other things that you guys think of and you want to know, I'll try my best to answer them and I'll try and monitor this, uh, this comment thread on this video. So just put your questions in below there and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Well, that's it for me, guys. I am out of here. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something useful in there. And again, if there's anything else that you want me to do a review, leave a comment in the section below. If you like this kind of content, give us a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. See you next time. Be safe. Bye.